Okay, so the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a bit of an anomaly in Hollywood at the moment. Marvel Studios have somehow managed to craft 34 projects that all interconnect with each other, and due to telling this ongoing story, they've somehow built a massive franchise that delivers success after success. Once the MCU started to take off, a lot of studios tried to get in on it too, but where Foggy succeeded, they all failed. This has happened every single time, with us constantly seeing studios announce they have a shared universe on the way that ultimately ends up never getting off the ground. But why is it so difficult to do? Even DC, who have a similar structure and character roster as Marvel do, have found it difficult to catch up to them, and there's way more dead universes right now than there are live ones. Now throughout this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive on the strategies that Marvel have used, and also going over why so many other studios don't understand the key fundamentals. This video was inspired by the Warner Brothers Discovery Investor Call last week, in which David Zaslav talked about how DC are putting a 10 year plan in place that will mimic Marvel Studios. It's something that the corporation has tried to do before, and I'm actually really surprised that they're going this route. Both the Batman and Joker were released to both critical and financial success, and with them being standalone, I thought they'd try and focus on something like that for the foreseeable future. It seems that the studio are not learning from the lessons of the past, and though I don't just want to sh** all over the company in this video, I think it's interesting to study why Feige succeeded where so many have failed. I think there's going to be a lot of opinions over this, so if you agree with us, then please hit the thumbs up button, and down if you don't. There's also the comments too if you want to leave your thoughts, and with that out of the way, let's get into it. Now in order to talk about this, we first have to go back to what things were like in 2008. Every time I've talked about this on a video, I've always had some 15 year old either say I'm talking sh** or I'm completely rewriting history to make things up. But I was there, I was there 1000 years ago. Now Iron Man, believe it or not, was a C-list character back in 2008 that no one really expected to do that well. Sure, they thought the movie would come out and be okay, but absolutely no one expected a multi-billion dollar franchise to be launched off the shoulders of Tony Stark. I think that this is the first major thing that a lot of studios forget when launching their own universes, and it's ultimately why they also panic and eventually fail. During the 90s, Marvel sold off their most popular characters, and because of this, they lost the movie rights to the X-Men, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Hulk, and a lot more. They were pretty much left with the characters that no one wanted, and because of this, there was absolutely no real pressure on any of their stuff performing well. If Iron Man did more than okay, it would be seen as a big success because there was no belief by the mainstream in the film. Now this was the complete opposite to how things are with DC. Because Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman are all household names, it instantly becomes a problem if they underperform even slightly. We saw it in the case of Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, where having these characters not completely break the bank made the execs panic and we all know how Justice League turned out. Now Marvel slowly started to put the pieces in place to build the Avengers, and they helped out on Universal's Incredible Hulk, dropped Iron Man 2, Thor, and then Captain America. Because they hadn't invented the shared movie universe yet, there was no pressure on them to connect films, so when stuff wasn't a massive success, it didn't matter all that much. Now if you look at the box offices for the Phase 1 films, then they're all pretty modest in comparison to what would come down the line, and this lack of expectations meant that Feige and Co. didn't sh** the bed, and divert from their overall plan. Nowadays, studios announce their entire 10 year plan before they've even made the first movie, so they put the pressure on themselves that if one fails, then the entire universe is f***ed. Marvel didn't do this from the outset, and though we had teasers of the Avengers coming, they could have easily just kept giving us solo movies for as long as they wanted, because we didn't expect a team up to be coming by a certain date. Movies involving characters like Batman also come with big investors behind them, so if one even performs in the mid-range, then it's going to make this studio panic because he's such a big name. Though Marvel had to work with their C-team, this was actually an advantage to them because there wasn't the mindset that these guys should be pulling in billions every movie. For example, say DC launched a new universe with the Teen Titans, do you think that people are going to view it as a failure if it doesn't bring in billions in ticket sales? No, probably not, because there's no expectations for these characters to completely kill it. Now on the opposite side of this, the idea of panic also massively plays into the overall slate as well, and studios will change direction in a second if things don't immediately go to plan. If we look at the Rotten Tomatoes score for films like Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk, and Thor, they're all good, but not absolutely amazing. These three films released back to back, and they're ones that often rank lower down the list when people are picking out their favourite movies from the franchise. 
No studio is willing to sit through back-to-back -back movies like this that score in the 60s to 70s on Rotten Tomatoes because they immediately expect everyone to love their franchise, buy all the toys, and take it to the next level. Building a fanbase takes time, and we've seen in the case of the Snyderverse how people slowly start to come around to it rather than everyone being on board with it from day one. Every studio is so fixated on getting to be at the point where they're at where Kevin Feige is now rather than where he was. They don't understand the building blocks and slow build that it took to get there because Marvel is such a staple now that everyone expects to be able to copy them instantly and gain the results that they have. Feige took several risks early on with characters that weren't expected to do well and he waited it out whilst they got mediocre reviews and money because he understood the foundation that these films would end up building. Every release had its own fan base that gravitated towards it, and though they didn't necessarily connect with everyone, there was enough in each individual movie to pull people in. Thus, when Avengers launched, this fan base that was spread across multiple projects all came together because they all had a vested interest in what was going on. So I think in the end that studios need to do the following if they want to succeed. Firstly, don't announce a massive universe because it puts pressure on you to have everything together and it leaves no room for mistakes from the off. I think that Matt Reeves' Batman was clever because they distanced themselves from the main DCEU and because of this there was no expectation on it to build things up. Hearing now that we're getting a sequel and some spin-off shows is a nice surprise rather than it being something that we feel we had to get. Point 2. Don't expect everything to be a hit and if it's not, that doesn't mean that the universe won't work in the long run. Iron Man 2, Incredible Hulk, Thor and even Captain America all did okay but what they did was get those characters to become familiar so that we cared about them. Marvel took their time, didn't put any pressure on themselves, and because of public perception, these characters also weren't expected to do wild numbers. This should be the same in the case of all that comes as part of DC's 10 year plan. 10 years is a long time and you need to build towards that rather than expecting all movies to be hits from day one. There will be stumbles, falls, and some that don't necessarily work, but give them room to breathe let people come to appreciate them and don't change direction because they don't completely hit a home run. That's why it annoys me when studios say, we will just copy Kevin Feige. The man is the blueprint but he's shown time and time again that it's difficult to replicate his strategy because no one has the patience or foresight to pull off what he did. They all want instant results, won't wait it out and therein lies their downfall. As much as I want this new 10 year DC plan to do well, the cynical side of me thinks about how we've heard this all before and so far I think that DC have rolled out this type of strategy three times in total. That takes me to my final point, stick to the plan. In the call Zaslav said that if they think a movie is crap then they just won't release it. However, this doesn't work with shared movie universes if they're to build towards something. For example, if you take Thor The Dark World out of the MCU, then a lot of the other movies won't make sense. They will waste countless millions creating films just to shelve them if they go with that ideology. They'll have to force the character development from said movie into other ones and it just won't work. Not even Marvel get every single film in their shared universe spot on and unfortunately you will have to put out crap but in the long run it will all connect and make sense. I really don't think that a shared universe and this idea of cancelling things works which is why I'd rather they go with standalone movies if that's their mind state. I'm begging you guys to just take it easy let things underperform and have confidence that you guys are worth sifting through the mud with so that we can get all the good stuff down the line. It's obviously going to be very hard to do in an industry that's so concerned with money but just wait it out, play the long game and I promise you guys will get there. That's if you're working at DC yeah I also want some money for coming up with this strategy. Now obviously I'd love to hear all your guys thoughts on this video whether you agree or not and if you were in charge exactly what you do. Comment below and let me know and just to let you know we're running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness on the 15th of August. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below exactly with your thoughts. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of Prey which will be linked on screen right now. Really good movie, lots to talk about for the future and definitely head over there right after this. Without the way, thanks for sticking through the video. I've been Paul and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.